Mr. Weller. Now we're going to move to hearing of the public. Uh, Mr. Treasurer, do we have do we have requests from the public? Yes, we do. We have a handful in excess of 20, uh, plus one more. And first we have uh, David Greer. In that case, since we have 20 in the interest of time, I will ask that we limit remarks to one minute instead of three minutes. Three minutes is going to be too long for 20 people. That's going to be one whole hour. Not the middle, at the beginning of the game. No, this is the beginning of the game. It's one hour. It's going to be one hour of comments from 20 people. So we've stated it. So one minute per comment. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, DPS School Board, uh, Treasurer, Superintendent Ward, you have my handout in front of you. Uh, it is as follows. My name is David K. Greer. I live at 344 Middle Street, Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I am the chairman of the Northwest Priority Board. This concern is over the decision to place law enforcement officers at sports activities. President Bakarov, DPS Board, and Superintendent Lloyd Ward. On behalf of the Northwest Priority Board and as its official spokesperson, I take this opportunity to convey my concern and need for clarification over the decision to place law enforcement officers at our school sports activities. My reason for taking the opportunity to convey my feelings and concerns over this decision is an attempt to get the complete and germane understanding of a decision of this magnitude during a time as tumultuous as we are experiencing in our present day society. In my world, life is just like a wheel. Everything comes back around. As a child growing up in Dayton, Ohio, and attending DPS from kindergarten to graduation, I came up during the time of trusting and depending on our firemen and police as our protectors and rescuers. Although we were taught not to talk to strangers, this did not apply to firemen and police. This contributed to the village component in our communities. When the riots took place in the 60s, this rapport was tarnished, strained, and eventually became somewhat extinct. This had an adverse effect on African Americans, especially after the evolutionary impact that emanated from the history of slavery. With those incidents that we have been inundated with in our society, where some law enforcement officers have taken the lives of African Americans, the mistrust and fear of our law enforcement officers is a staggering impact of reality that affects African Americans, especially our youth. With armed law enforcement officers being present at our youth sports activities, the atmosphere of discomfort and confusion will manifest itself. All of our children are not criminals, and all of our children are not perpetrators of misconduct. However, the potential of this being understood as such is consummated by recent incidents in our society. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Professor Benilia Randall. I'm here representing the Dayton Africana Elders Council. I'm so angry that it is hard for me even to pull together. At 5.30 this morning, I was arguing with my sister, not arguing, talking to her about how angry I am with this game called the Dayton Public School Board. Okay? You're going to call people a gang, call yourself a gang. Because what you have done is ganged up on the students and parents of this community knowing that police misact on our community. You know it. This is nothing new to you. Dr. Walker, Dr. Roundtree, Mr. Lacey, you've been on the board 10 years. Adil, I'm sorry. I can't say your last name right, so I'm not going to mess it up. You've only been two years, but you know you're from an immigrant community. You know what happens to an immigrant community. Ms. Taylor, you, we've talked about what happens to poor whites 
you all know and why in the hell you would vote in police is beyond me. It is beyond me. I don't understand. I will never understand. I'm talking as a parent of 44-year-old men, a grandparent of five-year-old grandchildren, black boys who will not be able to walk down the street in Oakwood where we lived without being stopped by police. My, ch my children were stopped so many times by police in a white community for walking home that we had to put on my lawyer suit and go talk to the police chief and say, look, no matter how you treat the rest of the black people, we're yours. We live in this community. Don't be stopping him anymore. You are, this is a accident waiting to happen. That's all it is. And one of these days, you may not be on the board when it happened, but it will happen. You need to take that back. There are other things you all can do, and you should do them. Thank you, Professor I just Randall. want to say one more thing. I had to get my breath, because I am very angry. And, and, and what I want to say is, what is the point of an elected board? If you are not going to represent the interests of our community, we might as well have an appointed board. Might as well. You're not here to support the superintendent. That is not your job. Your job is to represent the community and their interests. And if the superintendent is doing that well, he or she, then you support them. And if they're not, then you don't. Thank you, Professor Rundle. And No, I'm not through. I turned uh, out, I haven't been here in a long time because of a lot of issues, but I if understand. I had been told that it was only one minute, I might not have come. I'd have just sent a little one-minute videotape. The last thing I want to say is that I spoke recently before the UN Working Group of Experts on People of African Descent here in the United States. And their initial report, which they're going to come out in final in September, calls to question the human rights violation of having police in school. Thank you, Professor Randall. So you need to stop and think about that. It, I know you well want to move on, and I know I should stop, but I'm. But you know you need to hear this. You don't invite people you, out and, and then and think that they can say what they got to say in one or two minutes. You know, that just ain't gonna happen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Professor Randall. Um, Catherine Williams mother of four boys and um, I've been here maybe a year or so in Dayton, Ohio and I'm extremely, extremely heartbroken how the schools have been with their procedures, how they've just belittled me as far as not taking any concern for where my child has been, how he gets there. To my understanding, I'm thinking when I sent him to school, he's somewhat their responsibility I give them the care for him when I can, for his education and for his safety. In the time frame from October till now, my son has either been misplaced, lost, or not known where he's been. Put on the wrong bus. I'm getting phone calls saying, is your son home? Has he made it there yet? I shouldn't have to be asked that question because I gave them the responsibility to make sure he got where he's supposed to be and to get back home safely to me. Four times is ridiculous. And just the last incident for my son to be missing, thank goodness it was a good Samaritan. She found my son wandering, took him back to the school, and oh my goodness, the secretary at the desk, the lady tells her, I found, your, I found a kid, he says he goes to this school. I don't know where he goes. She got up out her desk, to go find my information to give this stranger and let that lady leave again with my son. Thank you. Thank you, we've heard. So that's ridiculous. Not only did nobody take accountability for it, nobody apologized. I haven't got a letter. The police said no law was broken. If I was to lose my son, I would have been locked up and Children's Services would have had him. Nobody was fired. Nobody was suspended. The Board of Education made me feel this small. 
they told me that I had to ask permission for the same people that violated me. I had to get permission for them for him to go to another school. They should have. I should have never felt like I had to go back to the person that made me feel small to go get him to go to another school. They should have been null and void. Right. So some type of procedure has to happen to where somebody has to be accountable for what they do because I would have been accountable for it. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. I'm Bishop Richard Cox, and I'm the president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and the national board member of SCLC. I live at 3044 Jewelstone Drive. Welcome. Mr. President, when you limit a community that's concerned about the Dayton Public Schools to one minute, you make them angry, and it tells them that you don't want to listen to them in the first place. That's right. that, that's not fair. I'm here because I support racial justice now, the Dayton Black Panther Party, Stop Mass Incarceration, the Republic of New Africa. We support these groups because we work with these groups every day. I think that if you replace the police department, and it was a bad move on the board to say you want the sheriff's department uh, when they've killed a black person in the community and we didn't get justice behind it, that's a bad move. When a child can go to a game and look at a policeman with a gun, then you wonder why they won't. Let's be serious. This is the closest you're ever going to get to the PTA. I think the school board needs to work with all of these groups, and they need to go into the community. For what better to raise your children to help get your children on the right track in the community by people who have raised children? Some of the members of this community have raised children through the Dayton public school system. This community is not here to do you any harm. They want to see that the Dayton public school system do good. But don't alienate them by not listening to them. You ought to take the Black Panther Party and y'all ought to get a stipend to everybody that went to those basketball games. Look what happened at Belmont High School. Thank you. The Sheriff's Department couldn't even control them or stop them from fighting. They tricked y'all. They had a bomb scare. They got everybody out of the school, and they got in an open field where they wanted to fight. Thank if you. you listen to this community, stop mass incarceration. Understand what racial justice now is trying to do. They're trying to stop the school to pipeline for the prison. They target our children in third and fourth grade. They hope that they don't read when they're third graders so they can go to the penitentiary when they're ninth graders. Sir, so thank it's you. Very your serious time is business. up, please. I know it's no, time your to stop. Your time is up. You need to on, leave on, the podium on, now, please. Uh, let me make one more point. No, are you going to have me arrested? Is, up. Oh, is that what you're going to do? You have to the police out yes, here to arrest me? Yes, sir, because we have business. You want some, we, this is our business. We. And we're willing you to listen to every community. person here. You didn't stop no, anybody no, else minute, like please. that. You we're didn't stop the city manager, to okay. and, and, and you're arguing at me. Yes, call security. Yes. Do that. Sir, thank you very much. We heard you, I and we hear everybody. I want here to find out why we can't talk. Thank you. Thank or you. do we need to schedule another school board meeting? You're welcome to come to every meeting. You didn't even let me finish my point. My point you was you need to listen to the people trying to help. Beyond three minutes by now. That's all I'm saying. Are y'all going to listen to the people trying to help you, or are you going to tell them to go to hell? We How always listen. We always listen. Thank you very much. We always listen. Thank you very much. You've spoken for more than three minutes, sir, actually. Not at all. And you interrupted me, and she interrupted me, and you owe me an apology. Next speaker. Some of y'all's dead up on that school board. You're talking to a senior citizen. Thank you. My name is Anthony Roebuck. I'm the lead organizer for Stop Mass Incarceration Network, Miami Valley. And uh, I'm upset. I'm upset because it is ridiculous that you have to call in police officers and pay them to come into the schools to do security for games we won't even communicate with the community to solve the issue we as the community have plans laid out there to support you all 
in, inside of the schools to protect our children and our teachers. But you won't listen to us. Like you are now, you are continuously cutting us off while we're trying to speak and communicate with you about our issues that we're having. And I'm going to tell you this, I'm not going to, I'm not going to take nobody cutting me off. We as the community have a right to come in here pissed off and mad as hell if it's an issue that you guys voted on but didn't communicate with us. Uh-oh, uh-oh, back up. Don't, don't do that. 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 Yes, now this, this, excuse my language, this is what you call bullshit. You know, you're not you're not you're out you're out of order. now you're out of order. And you're out of order, you have to stop. At this point, you have to stop and you have to yield the floor to the next speaker. You're absolutely out of order. Okay? You're out of order. That's right. You're out of order, sir. You're out of order. Who is our next speaker? Cheryl Smith. And who is after her? T. Lynn Brinson. I heard you, sir. I heard you, sir. No, I heard you really well. And everybody has been speaking for more than one minute. But this is a three-hour meeting, and we do not want to make it into an additional hour of comments. Okay? Especially on a matter that has been discussed many times before. So next speaker, please start, introduce yourself. Will you start my uh, minute after this discussion? Yeah. Okay, thank you. My name is Cheryl Wood Smith. I am a uh, graduate of Dayton Public Schools Roth High School class in 1966. Mm -hmm. I got an exemplary education on the west side of Dayton. The teachers loved me. They respected me. They knew I could achieve, and they implanted that in my heart and in my mind. That's why I'm a master's graduated registered nurse and chemical dependency counselor today. I would like to see some of that here. I don't. I want you to know that I am a member of Black Lives Matter Miami Valley. We stand in support of racial justice now. We demand a response from the school board as to why you have criminalized our children by implanting police officers in their space. Yes, you have, Ms. Taylor. Don't shake your head like you don't know that's true. You are the first one I heard uh, applauding this police. You know, our children are not criminals. They're students, and you need to remember that. I have three questions for the school board I would like you to answer directly. How do we get a transcript of the uh, meeting that was held where you decided to put school, uh, police officers in our school board? The second, question, the second question I want to ask is, where do we find out about how much you're paying these police officers to intimidate and criminalize our children so we can account, uh, calculate other solutions that might work better? And the third thing I'd like to know, who are these policemen responsible to? Who do they answer to? And who is going to be there for our children? Thank you very much. And you will receive all the answers in writing to the provided address or email. Thank you, Mr. President. Why, uh, I noticed the screen went up. I'm assuming we're still videotaping the session, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I just didn't know why the screen went up. Ah, gotcha. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent, Treasurer, or President. Uh, who is the next speaker? Please, Gage. Alice. Alice, I'm sorry. Thank Good you. Good evening. My name is Lynn Brinson. I'm a trauma therapist, substance abuse counselor, very concerned about my community, 
very concerned about this meeting and the lack of concern that seems to be coming from the board. Um, pretty overwhelmed. This is my first meeting. Um, I'm concerned about our children. I want the board to particularly answer a question as to why there would need to be a gun in the presence of children at a sporting event. My concern is that after this guns and police officers are allowed into sporting events that they would be allowed in schools. Yeah. I'm concerned why adults cannot handle children in an appropriate, compassionate way. And also I agree with my community that they are being criminalized. I'm so over, again, so overwhelmed with the lack of concern and disrespect and attitude coming from members of the board. It's very disgusting to hear um, what I'm hearing. My children are in their 20s, but I have grandchildren who are young, and I'm concerned that by the time they reach school age, they will be pushed into this pipeline of criminal um, labeling. Thank very you. upset, very concerned, just overwhelmed by this. Thank Over you. Thank you very much for your comment. Yeah. Uh, next speaker, please. Off of what I've seen up there on that screen, I really don't even know where to begin. I mean, Mr. Lacey had already covered it, saying that the numbers look the same this year as last year, so we need to do something immediately to change these numbers. And uh, I've been at these games for probably the last month now. I've been going to these games, man, and that's all they do is intimidate. It's people that don't even live in the community that's trying to tell our kids what to do. Now, I know the trick of the system, man, and we about to nip that in the bud now. Y'all supposed to be doing what the people want, right? The people in the community, right? Well, we don't want cops, so we need to know when the deadline is so we can make sure that they don't come back. Period. That's simple. Get them out of here, man. Get them out of here. They got to go. They trying to scare people. I mean, I've been there, and they don't, they, don't, they don't congregate. They don't converse with any of the kids that's there, outsiders or kids that's playing. Nervous when, when people walk past them. I see the one guy up in the bleachers like this already, and I wish he would in front of me, and I'm telling you all that now. I wish he would. Put his hands on somebody and try to brutally assault him in front of me. It's not happening, man. We got to watch our kids, man. This is our community. This is our babies. This is our time. And we're going to nip it in the bud now because I see the trickle-down effect. I'm not going to tell you that I know what y'all trying to do, starting off with putting these kids in our schools at the games. But we ain't about to have that, man. I'm telling you, it's over with. Get the officers out of our school now. Now. Find out that deadline. Can we know when the deadline is? Can one of y'all? I'll find out all of y'all. But I, we need to know the deadline so that we can make sure that we don't have them back. And I can't believe after y'all said that on camera that y'all weren't going to vote for this stuff and y'all still did it. Thank, Thank you. you for not doing it. Thank you, Don. But the rest of y'all, man, y'all. Thank you. And I don't even know why we let you back in. I think that we've made several mistakes here tonight. And the first one is when you have a policy that says citizens can speak three minutes right. and you change it, what's going to happen when you, our kids confront the police and schools, those rules change, and it seems to change whenever black folks show up. That's, right. that's not fair, Mr. President, and that's a mistake you made. Yeah. I don't care how many of us go to city commission, we have the same amount of time, and they never change it based on how many are there. You were wrong in that. My name is Reverend Jerome McCory, founder of the Adam Project. I'm a Dayton native, born and raised here, product of Dayton Public Schools, have a mother and a sister who are retired from Dayton Public as teachers. I have a sister, a nephew, and a niece who are still with Dayton Public Schools and still very active with Dayton Public Schools. I'm the founder of the Adam Project, a black male mentoring program that had a great history with Dayton Public Schools. But for the past, and I'm here to support racial justice now in their proposal. For the past 16 months, I've traveled this nation with Dr. Cornell West, with Michelle Alexander, with a handful of other folks whose names you might recognize. Listening to stories of mothers who have lost their sons and daughters to a policeman's bullet. Stories that you would want to limit to one minute if they showed up in this place. I've had to hear their stories and their devastation 
in several cases to hear a mother who called the police to help her calm a child down who was on medicine and to have that police officer kill that child. I've seen the videos of policemen in schools in other states. If we don't learn from others, then we don't deserve to sit on this board who have taken children, girl children, and literally tossed their desks across the room because instead of them being there for one purpose, teachers start relying on them to help them with discipline, and they throw our kids across, and you don't understand why we're concerned. That 16 months of spending time listening to those mothers' stories, traveling this country, speaking in school systems in Chicago, Thank you. New York, Ferguson, and other places, hearing those stories, talking to those teachers, even they're upset that the police are in their schools. We have mentors that are in this room right here who can do you a much better job at a basketball game, in our school buildings, Lori Ward and I have had a great relationship, and I've worked with several schools in Dayton Public through our mentoring program. We had greater success than you can achieve with handcuffs. Thank it you. is time, Mr. President, Thank to begin to respect us, and we ain't going to let you do it no other way. Thank you. Thank you. I think our um, lineup was purposely uh, taken out of place. Um, one of the things that I want to address here tonight is... Um, the student uh, discipline, the school police, and also the uh, school performance. You all know me very well. I'm always here when no one else is here um, to represent the best interests of black children in this district um, who are the majority. I have really gotten to the point where I think that there are forces that unfortunately it seems that some people uh, that's sitting up here are in collaboration with to uh, make sure that this school district stays at the bottom and fails so that there is a takeover for privatization. Because I don't know how else to figure out why you want to focus on control and compliance and spending money on that versus intellectual development and education. And that, to me, makes no sense because it's all connected. If you have a young person who's not learning, who's not reading, and furthermore, if we're real honest, whew, the staff in the buildings in West Dayton are, for the most part, pretty terrible, okay? And I'm talking about principles. And this is the truth. And if you think student achievement is going to come up, when children and families are totally disrespected when they walk into these buildings. If you think that makes for a school culture and climate that's positive, it doesn't. Children are never going to learn if they're walking in a building where they don't feel loved and nurtured. That's not going to happen. So you all can come up with all the plans that you want to, and I'm sure that there have been plans before, but until the plan includes a firing and some kind of accountability and put people in there that want to be there for young people to learn and, for, and that want to be in the buildings where these particular children are and teach them, nothing is going to change. Thank you. Accountability Thank you has got to happen. There has to be a change, a sea change in Thank staff you. in West Dayton. And that is a demand. There needs to be a sea change in principals and some of the staff in those buildings because the families that we, we work with you. are totally disrespected every single day. The children are totally disrespected every single day and it makes no sense. If we really want to bring student achievement up, then you have to have the right people in place to do that. Thank you. And we heard you. We are definitely against the police. Who's the next speaker? Because there has to be other ways and there are other ways that are evidence based. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. We've heard you. For young people to be safe without the police. No police in schools do not invest in uh, criminalization of young people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Greetings, uh, Dayton School Board, Superintendent Ward, and Treasurer Jones. My name is Carlos Buford, and I am a parent leader with Racial Justice Now. I'm a Dayton Public Schools parent of two, school, uh, two high school boys, and I'm here to expand on the particulars of what we will want to see in a memorandum of understanding between Dayton Public Schools and law enforcement agencies. School administrators and law enforcement agencies shall not in, shall enter into memorandum of understanding or intergovernmental agreement to clarify respective roles and to strictly limit law enforcement involvement in student behavior, and should do so even if a school district doesn't have officers in the schools. 
Memorandum of Understanding and Intergovernmental Agreements should clarify and limit the role of school resource officers and other security personnel. This includes detailed descriptions of school disciplinary measures, a plan for graduated responses to behavior, and explicit explanations of how different types of behavior will be addressed by the school and when to involve law enforcement officers. Citations, court referrals, and arrests should not be used against a child for most behavioral infractions, especially normal adolescent behavior, most nonviolent infractions, and those arising from student disabilities. These behavior infractions should, should be expressly listed in all memorandum of understanding with examples for trespassing, loitering, defiance, pro profanity, dress code violations, failure to follow the classroom rules, possession of inappropriate personal items, like, you know, for example, like cell phones and so on. Thank you. And I would like to just end on this one sentence that um, without good communication, without good understanding, we cannot have or achieve good relationships. Thank you. Superintendent Ward, Treasurer Jones, my name is Hashem Jabbar. Clearly this is a, a tense moment. You can see that our community members take our children very seriously, uh, regardless of um, what may occur here today. Obviously there's some serious love for these young people in our community. There's, there's men here today that have volunteered their time to come to the basketball games to provide security in spite of the police because in our community we have to watch the police more than we watch the crowd and that's just a reality in our community and so we're here today to, to express that to you the reality is there's not good relationships between the police and black youth and the black community in general we want you to know that that's very important and we're asking you today to take back what you've uh, you've done we uh, racial justice now has proposed uh, some alternatives working with community special, uh, intervention specialists. There are other options besides police. We want you to take police out of our schools. And we know, and this is very important, that the head of the security department at Dayton Public Schools and the deputy are former police officers. He is helping his friends make some extra money when you all provide that extra money in the budget. We have men that are prepared to fight, period. But we have men that are prepared to fight for our children, to protect our families, to protect our friends, to protect our community. We're asking you to work with your community members, just as the Distress Commission has advised you to work with community groups, work with community groups to provide the needs of the community. We're saying to you today, we understand that money is being made. You see two black people on the corner, they say that's a gang, Police gets money for gang training, right? Police gets more weapons for gang training, right? This happens every day. We don't want to see a young man go to jail, a young girl go to jail, get a record, then what happens to them, right? Thank What's you. the future? We don't want to see people locked up. Poli uh, young men and young children have died in police custody in Dayton, in Dayton correct? Yeah. Young black men have died in police custody custody in Dayton. Thank you. Thank you. Um, to Dayton School Board members and Superintendent Ward, as a group of parents and other concerned community stakeholders, we are asking the Dayton Public School re to reconsider its decision to pay armed police officers to be stationed at DPS sporting events. We understand and appreciate the idea behind this decision, and we can appreciate the idea of protecting young people and other community members. However, we disagree is that the police provide that protection, especially in low-income black communities. Respectfully, there is just too much at stake anytime armed police officers are involved with keeping black youth in line, with fear and intimidation. There is too much evidence that is a terrible idea with keeping black youth in line. To get armed police officers involved with immature youth, to that end, we propose DPS in the short-term develop of a comprehensive memorandum of understanding with the law enforcement agencies that have already been contracted. The next speaker will expand on this. However, going forward, we are asking this board to become more creative and truly represent the needs of the students, family, and community members that are primary stakeholders in DPS. We are asking for prevention and intervention strategies to be implemented instead of negative reinforcement like armed cops. The board should be developing relationships and partnerships with community resources and other programs that already exist that can 
better serve the needs of Dayton children. For example, DPS should be partnering with the city of Dayton and or Montgomery County to implement a public and mental health approach to violence. Investing in community intervention workers, restorative practices, conflict transformation, and mediation are all proven strategies to de-escalate hostile situations. Develop MOU with law enforcement. Improve school culture and climate by requiring staff to have training on restorative practices, strategies, de-escalation techniques, and treat children and families with dignity and respect. Thank you. Use culturally appropriate mental health and trauma-informed support, such as Sunlight Village. Rehire, rehire, rehire restorative justice practitioners in all high schools. Thank you. Devine, I'm with Racial Justice Now. Relying on police presence to oversee youth violence is an adversarial and counterproductive approach towards addressing the violence that occurs at some DPS basketball games. DPS should use funding to reinvest in statistically proven restorative programs like conflict resolution and mediation that serve a character building and therapeutic purpose. The presence of armed officers introduces the possibility of arrest, public humiliation, violence by police, and traumatic police harassment to a student population that is already in an elevated state of distress due to conflicts between players and or community members during some basketball games. When a violent conflict is handled exclusively with traditional police protocols like the threat of arrest or violence, little is actually done to address the psychological suffering that underlies each altercation. A student who expresses themselves via fighting may be doing so due to a lack of knowledge on stress management, impulse control, communication, problem solving, emotional regulation, self-control, or other skills, all of which become definitively worse over time when the threat of incarceration or violence enters the scenario. The root causes of violence must be and can be addressed proactively with the use of restorative programs led by mental health and public health professionals who, due to the nature of their interests and expertise, can address the complex conflicts that DPS students experience better than police presence alone. The $5,000 being used to compensate our police officers per game would be better spent hiring mental health professionals who are trained in conflict resolution to address students who behave violently at games as part of a larger district-wide shift to restorative models of intervention. DPS must transition to interventions that teach students to navigate difficult life experiences of trauma, poverty, anxiety, depression, anger, and grief. Doing this provides long-term decision-making skills that ripple into the community at large. If police are deemed absolutely necessary, a, member a memorandum of understanding must be issued requiring the police to be unarmed and receive extensive training in media conflict resolution and other non-violent restorative measures. Restorative measures recognize the need for therapeutic non-judgmental interventions as opposed to current fear, shame, violence, or incarceration based approaches to deterring harmful behaviors. Restorative justice programs in Denver, Colorado have proven effective in meeting or exceeding the demands for probation or turnaround put on the schools by their respective departments of education. Thank I, re you. I reference Thank a study endorsed by the National Education Association and the University of Denver. Dayton Public Schools shows similar demographics to this region of Denver in terms of race test scores and socioeconomic background, and they are likely to benefit from restorative practices in a similar way. Thank you. I'm Steve Matlock, pastor of the Body of Christ Deliverance Center located in Harrison Township. I'm also on the steering committee of racial justice now and totally believe in, in what we're doing and the efforts that we're putting in to try to save just the lives of our youth, That's right. just their lives. I think I got offended when, when Ms. Zakia asked me if I would come here. As I am now, while the two of you are talking. <clears throat> you know, you made the statement. You made the statement, especially since we've already heard this issue. That was one of the most condescending statements I've heard this evening. So since you already heard it means we shouldn't address it. You've already heard it, so, so we shouldn't concern ourselves about it because I got offended when they asked me to come because this, is, this should be a mute issue. And you, thank God you didn't have a gun. As air, don't you, you can say what you want, but as, as, as hyper as you got, how dare us? Now just imagine a policeman just like that with a weapon. With our kids. And y'all grown. You ought to leave. 
please come to order. Thank you for your comment. After Ms. Blanchard's Mary Sue Gminer. Superintendent Ward, Dayton Board of Education members. I want to begin my remarks with a level of understanding. I'm a graduate of, Dun of, pu of Dayton Public Schools, Paul Lawrence Dunbar class of 1988. My children attended Dayton Public Schools, and my husband is an employee of Dayton Public Schools as a security resource officer, okay? I have 20 years of background experience myself in child welfare. I'm a licensed therapist and a licensed independent chemical dependency counselor. My background is rich, but my love for my community and black children is richer. I don't speak as an individual who happened to be at a board meeting. I come here this evening to project my proprietorship of this board as a taxpaying citizen and as a voter. I give you permission to serve. I say all this to mean that you limiting or muting the voices of fellow concerned proprietors of this school board is not practical. We need to come up with systems that would allow parents to leave from the front without shackles or restraints for those that fear critique. We are at a critical juncture with respect to fighting for students at Dayton City Schools. Within the fight, we don't need additional uphill battles, namely pay police officers to ensure our black children stay in line. Let me break this down a little further for you so you can get a real clear picture as to why we detest our police officers at our games. The term officer is derived from the term overseer. For those who need a history lesson, the overseer was the person placed in charge by the slave master to oversee the working and the doings of the slave. The slave was considered property and three-fifths of a person. As we see on an almost daily basis, particularly with the advancement of social media, the relationship between the police officers and African people have not changed. We are still fighting for our humanity. My daughter, and that's the pictures that I'm passing around now, age 16, she is 121 pounds soaking wet, was a victim of police violence yeah. at the hands of Montgomery County Sheriff Department, those who you are employing to police our children in the school at the gangs. She was required to go to the hospital. Please don't deduce your role on a subconscious level as the slave owner and place paid overseers over our black children. Well, we are willing to work with you to ensure that those who attend games can continue to support our athletes as well as be an avid fan base for Dayton Public Schools. Through Racial Justice Now and in collaboration with Stop Mass Incarcerate, Incarceration and a New Black Panther Party, there are proposals on the table to be chaperones and provide additional supports with collaboration with your current unarmed security resource officers. Thank you. There are community mental health groups such as Sunlight Village yeah. that are willing to contract with DPS to bring culturally relevant mental health services to our children. There are others who live in the community that have the expertise to train staff in restorative justice practices as well as to provide emotional healing circles in our schools. Thank you. I provided Thank you, you with solution-based information with the full expectation that you act on it with fidelity. Thank you for your indulgence. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mary Sue Gaminer. I'm a taxpaying citizen of Dayton, and I wanted to talk tonight about the importance of school atmosphere, the importance of a learning atmosphere, one of excitement in learning, of energy in learning. And I want to say that extracurricular activities need to have that same atmosphere. They must be an extension of that, including sporting activities. The presence of police officers is a hindrance to that atmosphere. The reality, and we have to face the reality, is that police community relations in the city of Dayton are not smooth. They are not quiet. They are not happy. And having police officers in that situation is counterproductive. Officers come in with an assertion of power. And so I want to read just a little bit from um, Conflict and Transformation. This is from a, a Conflict Transformation Training Manual that, um, that I have. It says, feeling powerful, that is, able to significantly influence situations affecting one personally, is a prerequisite to constructive conflict management. 
So people experience powerlessness at various levels. The first one is outcome. When one's preference is overruled, this form of powerlessness disappoints but doesn't embitter. People empowered in other ways know that no one always wins, and they tolerate such lo losses. Process when one doesn't just lose, but is not even seriously consulted. Thank you. When the process for arriving at a decision is too hasty, exclusive, or unclear for one to feel included, which is what we experience tonight. Process powerlessness is far more serious than outcome powerlessness. When people complain about outcomes, it is usually because they believe the process was unfair. Thank so you. cutting us from three minutes to one minute was an unfair change of process. And I really recommend that the board consider their own conflict transformation training. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Brett Forney. I'm one of the organizers of the Dayton Local Organizing Committee and also a member of Racial uh, Justice Now. Uh, I'm going to skip uh, quickly to uh, my main point because I think we've expressed what we want to express tonight. Um, I want to tell quickly of an experience that I had at a festival that had about two or 3,000 students that uh, we had a group of a large group of police officers from this district were policing that event. Nothing really crazy happened uh, that night, but when I came to this event, and when I walked in with my family, there were about a group of 12 to 15 students. There were two girls who were locked in a controversy, they were arguing with one another. There was a group of four or five officers standing by this group of 12 to 15 students watching the girls argue, and it was escalating to that point. I walked up into that crowd, and I stood right in the middle of them students, and I looked them in the eye, and I said, what are y'all doing? You know, and eventually, they kind of they kind of busted it up a little bit. Okay. Um, a little, little bit later on at that event, there was another young girl who was locked in verbal controversy. And one of the parents walked up and said, little girl, I don't know who your parents are, but you about to sit your behind now. And he grabbed her up and walked her off away from, from that conflict. Right. Now, uh, with police training, um, and I know police trainings, um, it, it, it escalates very fast. There's a verbal command, and then if you don't comply to that verbal command, out comes the weapon and then goes to the next thing. Yeah. What is the training that these officers have? What is their um, protocol? when they're dealing with conflicts at these games. In the memorandum of understanding that racial justice now is asking for, and one of the things at the end of tonight we want to ask you is are you willing to be inclusive of the process that the people are asking for? Because that's one thing we haven't heard. Are you willing to be inclusive of the process? And I think that answer is what's sitting here and no one's saying anything. We want in the memorandum of understanding, we want to know what the training protocol is going to be for the officers. How are they trained and how are they going to handle conflicts? Why do they feel that they can even remedy the situation since the decision was made to bring them in? We understand that sometimes when you got public fights like the one that happened at Ponitz, uh, very serious, the board has to make a quick response to a situation. Thank the you. board did make that decision, but now we're asking you to be inclusive for the process and give us that memorandum of understanding to let us know what the training is and include the men and women who want to volunteer in this community. Be inclusive. Thank you for coming. This concludes the hearing from the public. If I may add, uh, we heard from 21, I believe, or 22 people today. About 20 people, uh, the bulk of them on one particular issue, which was voted on, I believe, at the last <coughs> session of this board, uh, allocation of $5,000 to the Sheriff's Department for uh, officers from the Sheriff's Department to be at sports games. Um, we've heard loud and clear all the concerns of the public. Everybody who's present here, everybody who's watching, um, of course there are a lot of different uh, people who have come here and spoken. Uh, we really appreciate your comments. Uh, at the same time, we had to limit it because typically our board meetings are two hours. Uh, today we already budgeted for three hours and uh, usually public comments take up no more than 20 minutes or so. So hence the calculus that when you have over 20 people, if you get to allow three minutes each to speak, that's going to be at least one hour, you know, just in speaking which makes it very, uh, very difficult because that's in addition to already the three-hour meeting that has been budgeted. 
Uh, what I would propose is that this board considers this issue again at next month's uh, meeting. Perhaps we could also invite, uh, we could obviously, we'll invite uh, all the public, the members of the public that have spoken today. We'll also invite from the Sheriff's Department, from the Dayton Police, and uh, for the investigate this issue, see what are the protocols for sporting events, and uh, give it another consideration. So does that sound good? For the board? Okay. If that's, yes. I, I wondered if you would even think about holding a special meeting, because I think when you have a business meeting, you have agenda items that must be addressed, and they're important. And I want, I'm just going to be honest, I want every business meeting to address academic achievement in a real strategic way. But I think this is an equally important agenda item, and I think it warrants its own meeting because it's so complex and it involves so many people, and we are looking for solutions. And I think that if there are solutions that we have not considered, we need to start considering them. And so I, I would recommend that we hold a meeting soon, and we hold a meeting just with one agenda item, and that be the item. That's a, that's a very good suggestion, so we'll make sure to set aside a date in the very near future, in the next uh, few weeks, so that that would be a special meeting. Uh, Board Member McManus? How, how will we know about that meeting? How are you yeah. going to make that known to the public? All of our meetings are always public, so we always make sure that uh, they're out there, they're in the newspapers, they're in the social media. And uh, so you will, you will definitely know. Yeah, and, and we will, and we will. Thank you, Professor Randall. Right. Dr. Bagarov, you, but we Dr. have Bagarov. to hear from everybody. Yeah. And, and so, so yeah. I understand. Uh, Board Member McManus, and then we'll come to Thank Dr. Walker. Thank you, Mr. President. And to everybody here, uh, I want you to know that if you would ever like to get in touch with me, uh, my personal cell is 937 260 1740. It's on my website. I invite you to call me anytime. I'll talk as, as long as you would like. And um, I thank everybody for being here. Thank you, Mr. President. Dr. Walker. Yeah, thank you. I like the idea that we will have a board meeting where we will discuss this issue spe specifically. But I would also suggest that we would have uh, representatives from the board and representatives of the, of the community expecting this community to come together to develop an agenda and a process so that we can hear each other, even if it means getting a culturally competent facilitator. I think that we have tremendous resources in this community, yes. tremendous will, and I would like, I would be uh, grieved if we let this opportunity pass and we don't make, and, and, and we don't take this as an opportunity to really work at providing unity for this community's sake. And when I say community, I'm talking about the city of Dayton. So I would suggest that there's a process uh, that, that will include the people in the community and not only people from, there are several other groups, and I think that uh, Mr. Dominic and many of you are familiar with them, uh, to make sure that they're invited to, because they have, there's, there's other voices out there, similar voices, who's looking for a way to be supported. And I think to invite all who has an interest, I think would be a rich evening for us, or a rich morning, whenever we plan the meeting. Yeah. And we've already Good suggestion. Thank you. Thank you. I think we should 
like I said, everybody who spoke today here will be invited. And this is a public meeting, a special meeting dedicated to this particular issue. So that way we'll have two hours to discuss this issue and come to some kind of a better understanding as well as make sure that everybody is on the same page. Thank you, Mr. President. If there are no other comments, we've got several more agenda items uh, in front of us. So now we have hearing of the bargaining units. Have any bargaining units? Yeah. 